Hi everyone, this is Bob Perkins with Inside Sales Studio. Welcome to another interview. You know, today's topic is so important to me and it has to do with training and development. I'm here with Bruce Lewalt. Uh, how are you doing today, Bruce? Doing great, really happy to be with you, Bob. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, Bruce is the founder and uh, CEO of BrainX. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with BrainX. Uh, it's the platform that really holds the uh, association certification, the CISP Certified Inside Sales Professional. Uh, so I'm sure you're somewhat familiar with, with BrainX, but there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, BrainX works with dozens of other uh, sales experts. And in fact, uh, there's one expert in particular, Dr. Neff, that Bruce introduced to me and his work around mental toughness training. So we're going to talk about training that has never been brought to the inside sales community. And to sort of set the context, I'd like to talk a little bit about our research. Our own AISP research talks about training and development as being in the top two challenges, not just for leaders, but for sales reps themselves. And sales reps are raising their hand mm -hmm. saying, train me, develop me, and it's all good. The leaders, as we talk to them and, and do some research, they're trying a lot of good stuff. They're, they're, sometimes they, they hire external trainers. Sometimes they uh, develop the training in-house. Uh, a lot of it's on product. There's a lot of sales training out there. The, the CISP is our own training for inside sales. Yeah. And um, what's never happened in the past is training around mental toughness. And we've seen athletes uh, work with mental toughness trainers. And isn't sales a lot like sports? So with that context, Bruce, I'd like you to set the stage for this new mental toughness training that I think is so critical for today's sales reps. Sure. And I'll follow up on that point. You know, when you think about it, the job of selling is much more closely aligned with that of a professional athlete than it is somebody that works in an office. Yeah. Uh, salespeople work under a competitive situation. They can do often everything right and still not make the sale. So they have to uh, be able to control their thoughts and emotions. And I met Dr. Neff uh, uh, several years ago. He is, by the way, one of the leading researchers and trainers in mental toughness for athletes and high-performing executives. Uh, he trains a lot of people under pressure. M just about anybody that you know of that's a real top-performing athlete either trains directly with him or uses his material. Um, professional golfers, uh, gold medal winning gymnasts, um, and teams, football teams do it. Uh, Nick Saban, you know, the first thing he did when he went to his new school was uh, institute mental toughness training because it's so important. So he is the leader in the research. This is not pop psychology stuff. There's hundreds and hundreds of research studies on how to get your brain into this state where it's really operating at its highest performance level and then how to control your emotions. So we worked together for quite a while to put this into a methodology that works for salespeople and boy, does it work. And, and Bruce, it's, it's unbelievable. Look, I, I was a competitive tennis player many years ago and I did mental toughness training back in the early 80s. And a light bulb, went, when you and I met to talk about this, a light bulb went off to me that said, my goodness, finally, something that can help salespeople, we never thought of this before. I mean, has it been thought of or is this brand new? Or No, I, I think, you know, when we started this, it, I'd never heard of it before um, and uh, it's never been done. And um, certainly no one else is doing it with this kind of research background where you have somebody at this level of expertise because a lot of it's really counterintuitive and quite frankly, counter to some of the, the uh, you know, uh, guru psychology that, you know, sales has come out of this area where, you know, it was the guru told us what to do. Now yeah. it's coming into met being metrics driven, research driven, continuous improvement driven. And this is really that way. And, and I know from being a sales uh, leader, a VP of sales, sales director, I know just how tough the job is. Uh, and, and you can see the stress and you can see people you know, having positive attitudes and negative attitudes. So let's get into this a little bit. You know, what does mental toughness training, what is it supposed to or does it accomplish? So fundamentally it's this. 
the brain operates in different zones. I mean, you know, there's obviously when you sleep, the brain is in a completely different operating me- mode than it is when you're awake. Yeah. And we all know we've heard of fight flight as a different mode of operation it actually changes the way the brain functions. Well, there is a high performance zone. Athletes talk about all the time is in the zone. Yeah. There's tremendous amount of cycle of research around what that is. Fundamentally, um, mental toughness training teaches a salesperson how to at will put themselves in that zone so they can be in their highest performance mental state mm-hmm. when it matters the most, which is when they're talking to customers. Yeah, that, that's unbelievable. And, and, you know, so often, you know, it's like uh, watching the NCAA tournament and people get that one shot to make a point. Sometimes they miss. Right. Um, and sometimes we make a bad call and we don't make the conversion. So talk to us a little bit about some of those nuances and how this can help them. Yeah. So probably one of the most important things is to recognize what happens when people don't have this training because we see it all the time. We don't recognize it. And what it is, salespeople who have not been trained to control their thoughts and emotions are always reacting right They're What we call in the reactive mindset. Yeah. And so if the sale goes bad, you know, the, or the call goes bad, they're frustrated, they're upset. Um, they use things that always and never talk. Tell me if you've heard this. Yeah. You know, Bob, I get all the bad leads. And Sam over there, they give him all the good leads. Yeah. They yeah. really think this. They get yeah. into this mindset and that downward spiral. spiral. Or, you know, people from New York, they never buy. <laughs> I hear that. Right. You know, yeah. And, and but that's a real problem with people that are reactive. Um, so that's some of the symptoms of things that everybody probably sees. Other things is they're distracted. They find it very, very hard mm-hmm. to maintain the kind of focus that you need throughout the call or to keep themselves motivated. Um, and they're always big complainers. So it's, it's always a problem. And Bruce, you know, you talk about the ups and downs of a call. And, you know, over the years, I've seen some, uh, some individual inside sales reps that really, I don't know if they're focused, but it seems like they can make call after call, good ones, bad ones. And it's, you know, it's almost like the zone you talked about. Yeah. Now here's one of those things I talked about that's really counterintuitive. So for decades, back to some carnival barker, you know, years ago said, look, you know, we just got to put the pressure on the salespeople. (laughs) I had a, my first sales manager, his favorite thing was hero to zero. Okay, you just made a sale, you're a hero, but now it's five minutes later, you're back to zero. Now go make me another sale, you know, Um, or the bell ringing, you know. Well, great that I can ring a bell when I make a sale, but what percentage of my day do I get to actually ring the bell? It's not much, right? Most of my day I'm doing the mechanics. So how do yeah. I keep myself motivated? So you hit it up right in the head. So, so yeah, no, go, go ahead. ahead. You can finish. I was just going to say, the best salespeople always have figured out how to motivate themselves intrinsically so that they're driven constantly to do their best work during the sale. But most people don't ever figure that out. Mental toughness teaches people right from the outset how to get in touch with what really drives you and it's, by the way, almost never cash. It's what can be done with that cash for my family, for myself, whatever. But anyway, how to get in touch with that and use that to drive consistent behavior, consistent motivation. So you don't have to hit them over the head or always give them a care to keep them motivated. Well, so, well that, you, you said something that really resonated to me, and I can translate it into my golf game, right? Mm. The ringing of the bell to me, or any golfer might be, hey, I made three good shots and I putted, putted in, in for birdie or, or par, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but that ringing the bell is that the ball going in the cup. It's the end thing. But you said there's a lot of things that happen throughout the day, especially with the sales reps, that they have to maintain focus on. Is that, um, you know, let's, let's dig into some of the actual techniques of the mental toughness training. And I know one we spoke about had to do with this, uh, you know, this deep breathing or inhaling. Can you... Yeah. Tell the audience what that is. So, so that comes from, you know, actually t- professional tennis players are the first guys and people to really do this. Almost every professional tax t- tennis player has a routine they do just before they serve or just before the part starts. They call it inhaling, but really they, um, they'll think about, you know, grip this, uh, uh, grip, they'll have four words that they say, and, you know, it's maybe grip, twist, deep breathe, cut, focus, you know, whatever those things are. Mm-hmm. It's called an inhaling technique. And what it's designed to do is put everything aside 
and get your brain into this zone of optimal performance. Now, mm. we have to teach you about the zone. You have to practice each of the techniques. It's kind of like driving a car. You know, you practice each thing. You're thinking about everything. But eventually, it has to all flow together. So mm. once we've taught all the techniques of controlling your thoughts of emotions and, and, um, and uh, learning how to use optimism in the right way, all those things, then you have to be able, when that phone rings or when you're dialing or when you're starting that, that interaction with the customer, you have to, just like the tennis player at each point, have to get yourself in that highly focused mental zone. That's what inhaling does. Now, it's hard to keep that, right? So yeah. you're not going to stay there all the time in that high performance zone. So you've got, you've got to get there. And that's what the inhaling process does, pulls it all together. Well, well you know, you, you just remind me of a golfer, Jason Day. Jason Day, before, his pre-shot routine he closes his eyes. He goes, yep. he takes his deep breath. And, you know, I'm thinking, well, oh, he's an athlete. Of course he would do that. But, again, can salespeople do, have a routine Absolutely. like that? And, yeah, and we train, yeah, we train hundreds and hundreds to do this. The results are spectacular. Low performers. In fact, we had an organization where when we went in to do this, uh, we were doing it, we were testing, we were doing A, B groups. They were going to fire this lady. She was, she was just terrible. And so we said, don't, don't do that. Let's put her in one of the groups and test her. So we taught her. Well, the long and short of that, eight months later, she's the number one salesperson in the company. Yes. She had the skill set, but she couldn't get herself to do it. Mm. She just didn't believe she had the skills. Mm. She couldn't focus. And she would self-destruct on a call because mentally she couldn't, she didn't believe she could do it well. And so she'd go into fight, flight, fluff yeah. it up and just, it was terrible. And then... Uh, she wasn't a case of this, but we had some other people. When they get like that, they, after that kind of thing, when they can't control their thoughts and, and emotions and they're in this reactive mindset, they become toxic to themselves and others. And I bet everybody in the audience can relate to this. Some salesperson that is always bad mouth, you know, this is just bad. The leads are all bad, you know, the product and our customer list or whatever it is. And not only are they toxic to themselves, but to everybody around them. It, it, we, we've seen that time and time again. You know, one, even one bad apple can kind of spoil the, the barrel, if you will. Um, but you, you said something, again, I think that will resonate with the leaders watching this, and that has to do with kind of this group culture, right? Yeah. Will this, does this mental toughness training, by the way, we're going to talk about how to learn more in a minute, but does this mental toughness training, does it help kind of the, the positive culture of a team, for example? Yeah, um, it, it does. And, and, you know, as you know, and we've talked about this, more and more companies are, are making this transition to a continuous improvement culture. Mm -hmm. um, and it really helps with that. You know, it, it fascinates me, you know, manufacturing uh, use metrics to create a continuous improvement culture 20 years ago. Marketing used Google Analytics and stuff to create this continuous improvement culture probably starting six or seven years ago. Sales, we're still in the, oh, it's good enough. What we do is good enough. And there's some mystery to what our great salespeople do. And no one can really figure it out. Or, or my one, my favorite, the guru culture. We're going to hire a guru to come in and tell us instead of using metrics. And, yeah. but now that's changing. And you're seeing that in the survey. So, all of the people that change go to a continuous improvement. Mm. You've got to change the mindset of the salespeople to believe, one, they can continuously improve better and better and better and better, and two, that, that they get joy out of doing that. Mm. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, everybody did it in school, mm. shows that this, the highest need is, is this, this fulfillment that comes when I'm really good at something. Yeah. We have seen that again and again with salespeople that they really want to be good at what they do. They get great fulfillment out of that. And mental toughness teaches them not only how to do that, but to continuously improve. There is just, we have yet to see a limit to how good somebody can get. Yeah, I can't help but kind of picture every inside sales rep having a personal mental toughness coach. Who yeah. would want that? So let's, let's kind of move into the, the course itself, right? Sure. Obviously, uh, viewers can go out to the AISB website, go to the uh, training and accreditations tab to learn more about this. But Bruce, talk to us a little bit about the, you know, kind of the process of the course, uh, what's involved in it, and how long it takes, if you, if you could. Sure. So what they're going to do, they're going to log into the BrainX system. They're going to get assigned to their own personal mental toughness coach who will work with them as they go through the coursework. Mm -hmm. So um, 
so what happens, let's say they're, they're learning a new concept. We've talked about motivation. One of the key motivators it, it, things is to understand what really drives you internally. So you're going to learn about the difference between, between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, what really drives you internally. And then you're going to go through a self-awareness process. Each salesperson think, what really does drive me? What, mm -hmm. what really gets me going? Um, I'll go outside sales to give you a, a great example of this. Um, there was a gentleman that um, was obese, severely obese, tried every diet, couldn't, couldn't possibly lose the weight, tried everything. Um, his daughter got very, very sick with a special type of cancer and she needed a bone marrow transfer. Mm. Now for 10 years, he'd been trying to lose weight. Mm. He was the only donor, mm. could not do the donation though because he was so overweight, he had to lose a whole bunch of weight. He lost the weight in eight months and saved her life. Mm. Mm. It was finally, he had a motivation that was strong enough mm -hmm. to make him consistent. Mm. Well, I'm here to tell you, Every single person we have done this process with mm -hmm. has found a motivation to be really great at sales and really consistent that is as powerful as that. But it takes some help. It takes some coaching. So once you learn about this, you're going to write out, you're going to do a survey, you're going to really help identify what drives you internally as a manager or as a salesperson. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get coaching from either Dr. Neff himself or one of his mental toughness coaches through the Brain X system will give you feedback, say, well, okay, you know, think about this because they've helped so many people. Mm -hmm. And at first try, you can't quite get deep enough and he'll help you really get into that. And then in the Brain X system, once you've really figured that out, then he te you learn how to leverage that to keep yourself motivated each day. So motivation is really important positiveness. You know, there are three types of people, you know, optimists, negatives, uh, uh, people that are just, you know, uh, pessimists about everything. And then people who claim that they're realists, which are actually just, you know, pessimists in denial. I mean, that's really what they are. So anyway, all the research shows for salespeople, you need to be an optimist. Optimistic salespeople sell more, just hands down. Yeah. So, but you may not naturally be that. So you learn how to get into this optimistic mindset. Um, focus is really difficult for sales. I mean, it's difficult for all of us. We get so distracted. Right. You learn how to focus, get laser focused on that conversation when you're in there. Um, and then, um, you know, it just this idea, uh, and I, it, we can talk about lots of things, but, you know, yeah. the last one is happiness, and maybe we can de delve a little more into that. But those are some of the things that you learn. But the process is that you go in the brain system, learn, apply, and get coaching. Well, the, the, just this thing on focus you mentioned, I mean, we, as a leader, I might say, C come on, everybody, we, we got this big campaign to execute on focus, focus, focus. Well, we, I, I never taught a rep technique to do that. So they're going to learn some specific techniques in the, in the class. Look, this is, to me, this is game changing, right? Uh, we really want the viewers to, to take a look at this. Uh, Bruce, let's talk about if any of the viewers here, if they want to have a dialogue to go a bit deeper with you on this? How can they, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Yeah, so, um, you know, the best way is just to call and text me. So I'll, I'll just give a direct phone number. Maybe you can put this up on the screen. We'll do that. Sure, it's 805-236-2564. And you can put my email address up there. I'm happy to do that. I'm available. I'm on the West Coast. So if you're in New York, don't call me at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> other than that, because it'll be five years. But other than that, Call me and we'll talk about this. We'll get online. We'll show you what the AAISP has developed here, their, their personal version of this. We'll walk through it so you can really figure it out how it works. I'm happy to also, in, as an initial thing, have you test groups because we've done this with Spectacular. We do A-B testing. Yeah. Uh, I would suggest whatever you do with training salespeople, whether it's a specific skill, always A-B test. You know, there's two, 300 different selling skills. And, and people just randomly pick out of the air the 10 or 15 they're going to teach and never A-B test skills. I mean, it's nuts. Well, um, so th we'll help you do that. That's great. And, and much like the CISP, of course, the, uh, it, it is the BrainX platform. Those, those viewing here that have gone through the CISP yeah. know how valuable it is. Yeah. Plus, plus, we've had to this A-B testing, Bruce, we've had a number of our member companies would would do a pilot of three or four CISPs, then they see the value, they roll it out to the team. Same type of thing with mental toughness. And before I forget, our own Ashley Becker went through the CISP that going through the mental toughness yeah. now is doing a, a lot of good stuff for her. Is that a good idea to, to, 
test it out or? Yes, absolutely. Um, and I should mention with that, always A-B test everything. That's just, you know, if, if you're into continuous improvement, you've got to know what works the best. Everything works a little bit, but what we have found, some things work twice as well as other things, you know. But here's the secret sauce. Mental toughness improves performance dramatically, but it is also a force multiplier for any type of skills training. I mean, it's just, and we'll, I'll send you some stats. Maybe you can put some things on the screen sure. um, that show the impact when you combine sales skills training with mental toughness training. It's unbelievable. I mean, we have groups, we have company, you won't, you, uh, you'll just have to ask me to prove this because no one's going <laughs> to leave this out. So we have groups and you know, you have this, you know, low performers, average performers and high performers and usually have these outlier high performers. Yeah. We have company after company where 90% or more of the sales team after mental toughness training, 90% or more are selling more mm. than what those high performers used to sell before it. I mean, wow. Wow. We, wow. We, we, we did this A-B testing with a group of, of average and low performers for a company, mm. and we looked at the historical highest sales ever in the, comp in the history of the company by the top performers ever. Yeah. The former average performers blew that away. And it was mental toughness in combination with some sales skills. It, 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 it's almost, you know, how, how we have looked past this, I don't know, but it's almost common sense. We say, oh, golf's a mental game. Well, isn't sales a mental game? Yeah. I mean, well, and it would be, to your point, it <laughs> would be absolutely unthinkable for a professional coach to not give mental toughness training to a professional athlete. Unthinkable. Unthinkable. It, just as unthinkable for a senior leader in, in, of a sales organization to not provide mental toughness. Well, now it's, a, look, now it's available. We're excited at the association right. to, be, to be partnered with, yeah. with you, uh, Brain X, Dr. Neff. This could be a game changer. Uh, if you're a member out there, even a non-member viewing this, get after it. We want to get some feedback from you on this mental toughness training. We'd love for you to take a look at it. So uh, with that, uh, Bruce, I want to thank you. I want to thank Brain X for your time today. Uh, for joining us. And uh, again, this is Bob Perkins with Inside Sales Studio. Have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye.